In this Warframe guide, I'm gonna tell you everything there is to know about survivability in Warframe against low-level enemies as well as the level 9999 endgame behemoths, so you effectively know how to stay alive basically forever. Just one quick disclaimer, I want this video to be applicable for as many players as possible, early game to late game, so if I mention something that you already know, please be so kind and just bear with me for a moment, I'd greatly appreciate it and I promise you, we're gonna get to the endgame stuff eventually. Thanks for that. Let's start mentioning one thing that is super important for early game players as well as 10,000 in-game hour veterans and that is movement. I know, I know, you're gonna think movement, come on, come up with something actually important, but bear with me for a minute, because movement is very important when it comes to staying alive in Warframe. Warframe, even if very special, still is a third-person shooter, which means shooter logic also applies to Warframe. I know we Warframe players don't always play it like a classical third-person shooter, but that does not mean that, for example, if you're standing still, you should be standing behind cover and minimizing the exposure of your Warframe's body to enemy fire is not important. In short, don't be that guy. And also, while you're standing still, uh, don't stand still. I mean, there's a reason Warframe has a very strong emphasis on its super fast movement, because that is what's actually gonna keep you alive. And I'm not just making that up, enemies in the game are actually hard-coded to be less accurate the faster you move. So go and use your bullet jump to accelerate quickly and use the aim glide to extend your airtime. Also make sure that you have situational awareness and that you know where the enemy is coming from so that you know where to actually take cover efficiently and just, you know, get a feeling of when to be where in combat. I know this will probably take some hours of getting used to, but I assure you, once you're there, you will never want to go back and it will bring you a long way when it comes to survivability. But now that we know how to move and how most certainly not to, let's look at another aspect of survivability that most people seem to disregard a bit even though it can yield some impressive results. And that would be crowd control. Because in short, if the enemies are preoccupied doing something else or basically anything other than killing you, they're not busy killing you. And that's exactly the type of defensive crowd control that we're looking at here. Once you have access to the Helminth system, there are a lot of Warframe skills that you can use and subsume them onto your Warframe to use them as crowd control in a defensive way to keep the enemies a bit off your tail. Such skills would be, for example, Necros's Terrify, Banshee's Silence, Rest and Rage from Equinox, Resonator from Octavia, and many more. One thing all these skills have in common is, they manipulate enemy behavior in a way that they're distracted from their one purpose, which is killing you. But if you don't have access to the Helminth system yet, or you simply want to use a different skill that doesn't have crowd control capacity, no problem. There's also one other way that I like a lot, and I personally find that not a lot of people seem to be using it, and that would be cold and radiation weaponry. As we all know, cold status effects slow down enemies, which means they're not gonna attack you as fast, and radiation status effects make enemies attack each other, meaning they're not as busy with you as they usually would. Combine that with a status-heavy AoE weapon, and with a few shells, you will turn the whole room into a grindy mosh pit of carnage, where most of the enemies will be completely distracted from their original purpose, which is killing you. My suggestion would be the Epitaph or the Staticore, which are both excellent secondary weapons to serve this very purpose. But even if all that is not good enough for you, I have one last suggestion, which would be the Operator Arcane Magus Lockdown that stuns enemies in place. So, long story short, there should be a fitting way of crowd control for every player out there, and I cannot encourage you enough to go and actually use it for defensive purposes. So now that we talked about what you can apply to your own movement and playstyle, as well as what you can apply to the enemies in order to make them less likely to hit you, let's finally talk about what you can do about your actual Warframe itself to make it more survivable. And while we're at that subject, we're gonna start out with the shields. Quick disclaimer though, what I'm about to tell you now is only applicable to enemy levels until around 200. Beyond that, you're gonna need different tactics, which we're gonna be talking about in a minute here, so stay tuned for that. 
Shields are, so to speak, your first line of defense. Before your health takes damage, before your armor will be at use, and before you're gonna lie down on the floor, your shields are gonna be the thing that absorbs the first damage incoming. But usually shields are only useful in the normal star chart level range and as soon as you get into steel path and higher level content, usually shields have a bit of a difficulty to keep up with the amount of damage that you're gonna be facing. So when you're asking yourself whether you should prioritize shields or rather health and armor, there is one simple rule. If your frame of choice happens to be a shield frame, that means if they have a lot of base shields or specific skills that can be used to restore your shields or fill them up to a certain percentage, that is most certainly a shield frame and you should go for shields. In that case, screw health, screw armor, don't mod for it at all, just mod for more shields and modify your build in a way that you can utilize your shield restore skills in order to keep the shield up at any time. Also, shield arcanes like Arcane Barrier or Arcane Aegis can help you with that. Just one thing to note, if you're running a shield-heavy frame, your shield is all nice and dandy, but be careful of toxin effects or toxin clouds, especially when facing the infested, because toxin naturally bypasses shields and attacks your health directly. However, if your Warframe of choice is no dedicated shield frame, as described before, you're gonna have to rely on health and armor to keep you afloat. And this whole health and armor thing that I want to talk about in this portion of the video is a very interesting topic because most of the players are somewhere in the Steel Path star chart, maybe staying in a survival mission for half an hour or so, and the maximum level of enemy that they encounter on a day-to-day -day basis is 200-ish at max. And if you find yourself playing at that specific level range, then health and armor is a completely viable way of staying alive if you do it properly. So, what do we need to look out for here? First off, in order to stay alive with the health and armor method, you're gonna look out for three things. First, you need enough health so you don't die in one hit. Second, you need to have as much damage reduction as physically possible. And third, of course, you need a method of healing yourself to make up for all the incoming damage. First of all, the health part is easily solved by simply using a health mod like Vitality or Umbral Vitality. You could of course use multiple ones, but from my experience I can tell that mostly in the Warframe builds there is not enough room for fitting multiple health mods. So one Vitality will have to be enough. Second would be the damage reduction. And of course the obvious method for damage reduction would be armor. The more armor your Warframe has, the less damage to health it will take. A very great mod combination here would be Umbral Vitality and Umbral Fiber, which not only give you a lot of health and armor, but also reinforce each other to even buff those stats up more. But we're just getting started. Next we're gonna look at Arcanes, and if you're intending to run Steel Path content, you might actually want to have Arcane Guardian, which is a super nice arcane, giving you an additional 900 armor if you get hit. That will be it for the armor, but there are still more methods for damage reductions that we could use. For example, flat out damage reduction mods like Adaptation, which is a great choice for every health armor tanky build, and also more specialized stuff like Aviator, which is great for Titania or Zephyr, for all the frames that remain in the air for long, reducing the damage taken while being in the air. And as if that's not enough, there are also some frames that have abilities that will give you another layer of damage reduction, depending on if you have them running or how to use them, so that would be a great choice to go for as well when you're running a health armor setup. And the last element, of course, would be the self-heal. Self-heal is important because while, sure, you're gonna have very low damage taken to your health, you're still taking damage to your health, no matter how much armor or adaptation or frame-specific skills you have to reduce it, you're still gonna lose health and you're gonna lose it fast if you're playing Steel Path. But gladly, there are tons, and I say metric, tons of methods to self-heal in Warframe so that there's literally the perfect match for every player. Just to give you some examples, you could for example subsume Warframe abilities that heal you. Very prominent would be Garuda's Blood Altar or also Savagoth's Gloom, which are great for self-healing. But what if you don't want to subsume a skill to heal yourself or you might use another subsumed skill on your setup? 
Well, no problem, you could also heal yourself, for example, with Operator Arcanes like Magus Elevate. This one will heal you when you transition into Operator and back into Warframe, easily done and also very easily spammable. But if that's too inconvenient for you, how about to lifesteal mods on weapons? Like Winds of Purity for the Furies, which is one of the very early game weapons, so you could theoretically run this even as a very new game player, or the two very prominent lifesteal mods on melee weapons, Life Strike and Healing Return. And of course, there would also be Arcane Grace, an arcane that heals you over time if you take damage. Great on Inaros or other frames with a lot of health. Not so great on frames with a low base health because it's depending on the base health percentage. And of course, there are tons of other ways that I'm not gonna go into right now because it would go way too far. But what's your favorite method of self-healing? Let me know in the comments down below, I'd really be interested in getting to know everything that you pull off to keep your heads above the water in dangerous territory. But alright, let's get into the nitty gritty. What if the enemies that you're up against are so high in their level that no shield, no health, no armor could protect you against the incoming damage and you would be hopelessly overwhelmed? Well, this is exactly the situation that most Steel Path Endurance players find themselves in on a daily basis, and there are a plethora of things you could do, starting with one that is actually pretty obvious, and that's invisibility. All it comes down to is, in short, if enemy don't see you, enemy don't hit you, aka you don't die. And that's almost everything there is to say about it. Unfortunately, invisibility is very limiting to your playstyle because there are only a few frames with acceptable stealth capabilities. Those being, of course, Octavia, Evara, Loki and Ash if you play him with the right build. If you like any of these frames, then absolutely play them and they can get you to very high enemy levels where there's very strong damage incoming. The only thing you need to take care of is that you don't accidentally run into something that kills you, because while you're invisible, sure the enemy can't see you, but if you run into a toxin cloud or an explosion, you're gonna die anyway. Apart from that though, you're pretty safe and that's why also these four frames are very much liked in the high level steel path playing community. But what if you don't want to restrict yourself to playing only as one of four frames? I mean, after all, there are 50 unique Warframes currently in the game and you might want to use any of the others. Well, if health, shields and armor can't save you, then how about, well, actual invincibility? Yes, invincibility, or as Warframe puts it, immunity to damage, actually exists in the game and there are quite some ways on how to exploit this. During your playtime you might have realized situations where your health bar just turns grey and you can physically not take any damage anymore. And this is exactly what we're talking about right now. Because there are some Warframes that actually give you this immunity to damage. One of them would of course be Valkyr and also very prominent with her fourth skill Hysteria making you basically invincible as long as the skill runs. So if you run her and you run a build that constantly has this skill on, you absolutely can not die. At least not as long as the skill is running. I mean, in the late game there are some enemies who can disrupt the skill and then kill you, but this is a topic for another video. Also, Hero Skill Covenant does the same thing, if not that long, but still it's pretty good. And there are more skills that work that way. But again, this would be limiting you to a certain selection of Warframes. And as we said with the invisibility ones, we don't necessarily want that. So is there a way to get invincibility or immunity to damage on every Warframe? And from the way I phrased this question, you can already tell, yes, of course, there is a way, and that way would be Rolling Guard. If you play high-level content, of course you know the mod Rolling Guard is an excellent mod and you should absolutely have it if you plan to go high-level into Steel Path. What Rolling Guard does is, if you roll, you get immunity to damage for 3 seconds and all negative status effects on you are cleared instantly. The whole thing has a cooldown of 7 seconds and you can basically do whatever you want in those 3 seconds of immunity, most likely getting to a safe spot or doing something to up your defenses again. And one thing that would be more consistent, because you can actually do it all the time, would be the Vazarin Focus School with the skill Protective Sling. 
If you go in Operator and sling through your Warframe, you will get invincibility for 5 seconds on the Warframe, and you can do that over and over again as much as you want to. Uh, of course, this is majorly inconvenient, but if you don't care about inconvenience, then this is also a very great way of getting into high level steel path and keeping yourself safe from damage. But of course, as I also just said, this is majorly inconvenient and Rolling Guard as well as Protective Sling, in my opinion, serve more of a supportive role of a different way of keeping you alive, which we're gonna talk about now, and that is, of course, the number one way of survivability in high-level content, very high-level content, and this is shield gating. We're gonna talk about what shield gating is, how it works and how we can abuse it right now, so let's get going with this. Shield gating is a mechanic that has been introduced into the game quite a while ago. The basic functionality is as follows. If you get hit, no matter how high the damage, as long as you have at least one point of shields left over, the shield is of course going to break, but it's gonna absorb all the damage from that hit. And in the process, when your shield breaks, you will get immunity to damage for 1.3 seconds. All of this, of course, excludes toxin damage because toxin bypasses shields by default, so keep that one in mind. So, your shield breaks, you get 1.3 seconds of invulnerability, and if your shield recharges to full and then breaks again, you get another 1.3 seconds of invulnerability and so on and so forth. However, if your shield doesn't fully recharge and then breaks again, you only get 0.3, which is basically not really useful. So, 1.3 seconds of invincibility it is then. What do we do with this? Well, 1.3 seconds might not be a lot, but if we somehow could manage to refill our shields to full in 1.3 seconds before the invincibility time frame runs out, that would mean we would get another 1.3 seconds of invincibility when that shield breaks again. And if we somehow, just somehow, manage to make it work that our shield would constantly refill in this 1.3 second time frame, that would make us effectively invincible completely against everything except, of course, toxin damage. And also this time, by the way I phrased it, you can already guess there is, of course, a way to do that, and we're gonna talk about that right now. First of all, most Warframes have shields in the hundreds when they're at max level, mostly like 300 or 450. That's quite a lot of shields, and it takes a lot of time to refill them to fully, so we need to change that. First of all, for shield gating, you're gonna need a decaying dragon key in your inventory. This will reduce your maximum shields by 75% and bring it, hopefully, down to even lower than 100. And that's good, because now we need to fill up less shields in order to get to maximum capacity. The next thing we're gonna look at is our Warframe skills. Does our Warframe have skills to refill their own shields? If yes, how can we make these skills as spammable as possible? This is diving into the build modification. If you're going for shield gating, you will expect your shields to go down very often, so you wanna make sure that the enemy economy of your Warframe allows this shield refill skill that they have to be uh, spammed quite frequently. But of course, not every Warframe has this ability. One workaround would be subsuming Hildren's Pillage, but that's not really the greatest shield refill skill on Earth, so we better go for the Augur mod set and the Aura mod Brief Respite. Brief Respite, as well as the set bonus of the Augur mods, refills your shields by a certain percentage of the energy that you spend on casting abilities. So that means you can now spam any ability as long as it costs enough energy for the mods to refill your shields to full. Depending on how high of a shield pool your Warframe has, you might already be done with just Brief Respite. If they have a bit more shields, you might want to toss in one or two Augur mods into your setup. But by doing this, you can now basically enable every Warframe to use abilities to refill their shields instantly to then benefit from shield gating and continuously go in that cycle of casting ability, refilling the shields, going down to zero, 1.3 seconds of invincibility, and so on and so forth. So the last question would be, which skill would you spam? Of course, you need one that costs a certain amount of energy, otherwise you're not gonna get enough shields back. And the best skill to use for this, in my opinion, would be Mold from Saren. That's really great because you can subsume it onto every Warframe with the Helmet system. 
Mold costs 50 energy, which means with Brief Respite and one or two Augur mods, you're basically gonna get enough shields back for every Warframe to benefit from shield gating, and at the same time, and that's the really important thing here, Saren's Mold doesn't have any casting animation, so you're gonna have zero downtime when using that skill, and also it's gonna direct enemy fire towards this mold shell thingy that you spawn with the skill. That means you're gonna have one or two seconds of off time from fire coming actually at you. And that will be the point where we get back to Rolling Guard and Protective Sling, because you can use either of these, or both at the same time, to really support this whole shield gating, sarin mold, whatever, playstyle, uh, to get some additional invincibility if you really need it, and if you're in a tight spot, maybe you're not having enough energy to cast mold when you need it most, and then you could go for Rolling Guard for another 3 seconds to pick up a much needed health orb, something in that direction. Of course, this is very hectic, and you will need some mechanical skill to pull it off consistently, especially if you stay in a mission for very long. So take your time and learn how to do it properly, you'll get a feel for it after some hours of playtime. And if you absolutely don't like it, as we said, there are still invisible frames or other frames that have skills that basically keep you invincible all the time, so there's no need to worry about it, you can just go and play them. That's it for invincibility, but if you also want a damage guide on how you're gonna deal big amounts of damage against the very high level enemies that you're encountering in Steel Path, then you might want to think about leaving the channel a sub, I'd greatly appreciate it, because I'm going to make a video on that topic very soon, so you're not gonna miss it. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like if you liked the video, hope to see you in the next one, and until then of course, good loot!